The Lord be with you. And good to be with you this morning as we gather for uh, worship and celebrate Holy Communion. Uh, we have uh, the chancel area set up for our children's Christmas program. But I was thinking, being we've got the risers, I was thinking maybe the church could just sit on the risers this morning and we could reverse, maybe reverse order. That would, no, it's, I would never be able to get you all up there. You would, you would resist that. But uh, it is exciting. We always look forward to the Christmas uh, program. Our kids have been working hard uh, this uh, fall and early winter with their, with their songs and their presentations. So if you want to come back at 1045, that would be lovely. We'll also have it um, on YouTube. Also, we'll be, uh, uh, have the online Christmas program online, too, for, for, for you as well. And then uh, we share in uh, a fellowship time together downstairs, a, a meal together after the Christmas program. So... Uh, certainly, you're all invited uh, to partake in, in all of that. Just a couple announcements that we make um, before we begin our worship. Uh, Deacon uh, Alex is out at Providence Valley as they're worshiping simultaneously, uh, just so uh, we can give uh, Providence the opportunity. They have some kids that are also, also in the Christmas program, so he is out there at uh, Providence. Uh, but he wanted me to announce, uh, just to remind you about his Bible study coming up. That's uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, beginning at 6.30, so he's making some French toast for you, so if you want to join him for an hour, uh, Pastor Lori is uh, coming back kind of as a guest speaker. She's going to be talking about Emmanuel, God, God with us, but there's another, if that's a little too early for you, there's another opportunity uh, at 11.30 tomorrow as well, so uh, um, just a reminder if you want to uh, join for the, that, Bible, that Bible study. Oh, we have our youth that are continuing to sell poinsettias to decorate our chancel area for the Christmas season. If you didn't get a chance to uh, purchase a poinsettia in memory or, or in honor of a loved one, uh, there'll be uh, students there. The Hersoms, I think, are back there helping you. Uh, so you can do that after, after worship uh, today. Um, and then uh, also, uh, as you make your plans for Christmas Eve, uh, just note that Christmas Eve, Eve at, at Grace will be at, uh, services will be at 3 o'clock and 4.30, and then Providence Valley will have a, a Christmas Eve worship service at 4.30, and then of course Christmas Day we worship back here at uh, 10 o'clock with Holy Communion. So uh, bring your family and come and celebrate uh, with us the birth of, the birth of Jesus. Uh, today also, uh, we want to give thanks uh, for the work that our fellowship board does, and so they've been in the back kind of greeting, and they've been downstairs in the kitchen preparing, so we just want to give thanks for uh, those members that have been uh, serving on the fellowship board, our director, Deb Bowe, and maybe if, if they're back there, Roger, could you send them out here, or if you're in the, they're already out here, all right, so please stand if you're in the, my, I can't see as well as I used to. <laughs> But you all look lovely this morning. Um, so we have Deb Bo, our director, and then we've got Kathy DeLong, Dick Adams, Vicki Gro, Mary Gritmacher, Bev Westfield, Terry Westfield, and Pat Lupke that uh, uh, work so hard to provide fellowship opportunities uh, for us uh, through, uh, a lot of times it's through food that gets to our hearts, uh, but also draws us together as a, as a congregation. So let's thank them for the work that they do on our behalf. And then uh, also we want to give thanks for our radio and online uh, services. They're given in memory of Winnie Anderson and his uh, great-grandchildren, Otto Vogel, Harper Anderson, and McKinnon Anderson uh, from, from, his, from their families. And then the bulletins that you hold in your hand are given in memory of Ardeth Westgard's 79th birthday on December 11th from Desiree Keeman and uh, Bobby Joe Shocker and their families. So thank you for those uh, memorial gifts for us that allows us to uh, worship together and then allows our community uh, to gather with us as we worship. So if you would stand and turn to the camera, we can give them a, a nice uh, hello and maybe wish them a Merry Christmas to those that are joining us uh, on our, and then uh, turn to your neighbor and, and say hello to them as well.
And then we'll begin with our opening song, Prepare the Royal Highway. It's ELW number 264 in our red hymnals. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and our neighbors. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us, we have strayed from your paths. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Now in the advent of Christ, the dawn from on high breaks upon us with light and healing. Sisters and brothers, remember the gift of baptism. Your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder, and you have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. We rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Then we pray together our prayer of the day this morning. 
Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated this year for our Advent lighting. We've been doing kind of generations of, of families. And so uh, this morning we have uh, Keith and Gail Nelson and then Alicia Beck and uh, Thea Wilsey lighting the Advent candle for us. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ that guards our hearts and minds, and the joy and consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In days when God's people long for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We who gather here, to, we who gather today, also seek comfort and peace. Yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for real peace, true peace, just peace. We wait as people who yearn for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing for all. We light these candles as signs of God's great hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God. Amen. Thank you, and we sing our Advent hymn, Christ is Our Light.
Mocker is our lector this morning. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Peter 3, 8 through 15. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will set ablaze and dissolved, the elements will melt with fire, but in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is a reading from St. Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and un untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. 
Well, today's gospel text is uh, the very beginning of the gospel of Mark, and it doesn't start out with a manger, doesn't start out with wise men, doesn't start out with any angel visits. The gospel of Mark opens with the writer saying, this is the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And that tagline, that tagline is supposed to kind of suck you in a little bit. It's supposed to get your attention a little bit. The writer of this account of the life and the ministry and the death and resurrection of Jesus quotes from the prophet Isaiah. He says, as it is written in the Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make the paths straight for him. And immediately then, the gospel writer moves to this weird guy, John the Baptist, shouting in the woods, talking about making crooked paths straight and, and washing people in a river. John the Baptist was an odd character, a wild kind of man. He was the sort of, you know, kind of a man who was rough around the edges, we might say, uncivilized. He was an ill-mannered guy who just talks too loud, right? But all the people from Judea and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to the wilderness to be baptized by him. John the Baptist, who dined on locusts and dressed with camel's hair. I've never seen anybody dressed with camel's hair. You guys look great. No camel's hair, I'm assuming, this morning. John dressed with camel's hair. But that's the look that exactly was what Mark, the gospel writer, was going for in describing John the Baptist. Because he wants you to notice that John is dressed like Elijah or Elisha, the prophets of old. Mark wants you to know this about John the Baptist. So you get this message and you get it without mistake. John is telling you something that you better pay attention to. And that something is Jesus, the Messiah. And that's the good news. John, John's clothes are not just laziness, and they're not kind of just a new fashion statement, something to look for, you know, at this year's holiday parties. John is wearing the clothes of a prophet of God, and no one can mistake that. And he does so in order for you and for me, for, for all of us to understand that the focal point and the center of his life is not himself, but it is actually the words that he speaks what he says, and who he is pointing to, Jesus Christ. His clothes are ready to wear for him because they match his message. Prophetic clothes for a prophetic message for you and for me. So how about your clothes? <laughs> how about our clothes this Advent season? Our are we ready? Are you ready to wear that message as, as well? Are you ready to wear the message of the one who has come to be with us, to turn us around, to turn you around as individuals, to turn us around as a society, to show us maybe something different that's happening in the world around us? How can it be good news that some odd-looking, bug-eating, wilderness-living prophet type is shouting high-octane truth at people like us? And, and why does the church insist every year that we deal with this wild man with his talk of repentance and change and, and crooked paths that are going to be straightened out? 
You know, we get John the Baptist every, every year in the Advent season. We place John the Baptist with his fiery message of repentance, his, his call to change at the introduction of the story of the birth of Jesus. And it seems somewhat strange for us. But it is good news. It is the beginning of the good news. It is good news because it teaches us that God always keeps speaking to us. And that God uses all kinds of people to keep speaking to us as well. It's good news that God speaks and keeps speaking even to a world that often refuses to pay much attention to what God is saying. Through what God is saying by the prophets of God that God has sent to us. Or even a world that doesn't like to pay much attention to God's spirit that is still moving throughout the world. And we do our best, I think, to shrug off what God is saying. We turn away, we, we raise the volume of the noise around us, but God still speaks to us. God continues to speak. God won't be quiet. God keeps speaking. And that's what the Bible tells us over and over again. And it's good news that God speaks about straightening out the roads that are crooked because we do have some crooked roads in our world, don't we? We even have some crooked roads in our, in our own lives. Polite people don't mention the crooked roads. Polite people don't point out that there are some things that need to be fixed around us. But God loves us enough to speak into those crooked places in our lives. Other people may not risk that kind of truth, that kind of honesty, even that kind of love, but God does. God speaks and will always speak into those places. God loves us too much to be polite. So where are the crooked roads in your life? What do you see as being crooked around, around you? I, th I think there are those moments when we watch the news or, or we read the newspapers or, or we listen to the radio and we say, well, ain't that awful? I shouldn't use the word ain't, I guess. <laughs> Isn't that awful? <laughs> Isn't that awful? And the, those words go a long way. Isn't that awful? And, and you know that, I know that. Isn't that awful? But I think we've got to go further than that. And I think God wants us to go further than just to say, well, isn't that awful? So Advent makes us think about crooked places that God speaks into. And if, we, and if we don't see the crooked places, if we don't talk about the crooked places, then we won't let God work with us to straighten those crooked places out. The good news, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. So the prophet's word comes to us today, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the rough places will be made plain, will be straightened out. The beginning of the good news. So what you are about to experience this year, at the beginning of Christmas, at this Advent season, is the story of the good news in your life. Good news for you. Good news for us. Because John the baptizer in the garb of a prophet is telling the truth about you. He's telling the truth about us, a truth that is ready 
for us to wear on our hearts, a truth that is ready for us to wear in our lives. And we need to wear it again and again and again, this truth. You need to wear this truth in your hearts, and, and not in any sentimental sort of way, but in a way that truly gives you a change of heart now in this Advent and Christmas season. So we have this truth. We need to wear it in our hearts. We need to wear it on our hands as we open our hands for communion this morning. And we wear this message of truth in our heads as we bow our heads in prayer to a God who has come, to a God who is here, to a God who is coming again in an unexpected way. So people of God, are you ready to wear this truth in your life? Are you ready to wear this good news of Jesus Christ in your very heart again? You all look lovely this way, <laughs> this morning, but this is the way that we look. This is how we dress for success in, the, in a life of faith and in a life of faithfulness. We wear this truth in us. We wear this truth, the good news, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ in our lives. So listen to this crazy man, John, again. Listen to this crazy guy speaking up here once again. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight all of the crooked places. And dress, dress for success this Christmas season. Amen. Let's sing our hymn, the hymn of the day, Hark the Glad Sound, hymn 239 found in our red hymnals. you to stand with me as you are able as we together confess our faith using this morning the words of our Apostles Creed. So together with the whole church let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we bow our heads and our hearts together for the prayers of the church. So let us pray. God of grace and God of mercy, we give you thanks for this day, for our lives, for one another, for your church gathered here in this place and around your world. We give you thanks uh, for the rich music that fills our sanctuary and our hearts this uh, Christmas time. We give you thanks uh, for the rich music of our children in this uh, community, of this church as they uh, prepare to tell once again the story of your son's birth, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. We give you thanks uh, as we hold this message and this story and this news in our embrace this uh, Christmas time. So kindle our hearts uh, to radiate the love of this message, uh, the love of your message to a world in need of it. Lord, in your mercy. And there are, most gracious God, so many in this world that are hurting, so many that are grieving, struggling in pain and, and tragedy in the war-torn places of your world. But we still declare your message that you are present and that you offer your great hope and your comfort to this broken world. So help us uh, to take our cues from this message that you give us, the very beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ at the very center of all of these things going on in the world and those things going on in our, our, our own lives. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we uh, pray that uh, for those in our midst this day who are lonely, we pray that you would give them company. For those who are mourning, that you would give them comfort. For those who are sick in body or soul, that you would give strength and a swift healing. And as we lift up to you now, we remember those who have asked for our prayers from this uh, community of faith. So we lift up to you our friends Roger and Wayne, Weldon, Don, Karen, Mike, Rick, David, John, Tammy, Brad, David, Tom, Jack, Lauren, Jim, Monica, Jennifer, Joey, Doug, Evelyn, Madeline, Deb, Bob, and also the families of Deborah Nalo and the families of Carney Breberg, and others that we now name before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, gracious God, we pray for ourselves in the silence of this very moment. We lift up the deepest yearnings of our hearts, trusting you to draw near to them and near to us. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else that you see that we need, we pray that you would grant it in the name of and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated now as uh, we receive our morning's offerings and, and our tithes.
pray together our offertory prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O giver of life, for all the gifts you bestow upon us every moment of every day. Help us to recognize the source of our lives, our blessings, and our very being. Take these small tokens of our thanks and bless them so that they might be blessings to others. In the name of the greatest gift of all, Christ Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so we remember together in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Yonder 
shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions be Would the congregation please rise? And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you forever in God's grace, peace be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. 
May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. peace serve the Lord.